Welcome to Secular Soup. Stay tuned for real talk about atheism, feminism, politics, parenting, and whatever the fuck else Amy and Amy want to talk about, because this is their show. And get ready for a whole lot of motherfucking profanity. You want to hear a secret? Uh, I couldn't. I won't tell anybody. Go ahead. If I sit next to you, I'm going to get gonorrhea. It's going to jump into me. Just two ladies hanging out. Is it okay for me to make fun of his neck waddle if I make fun of my own neck waddle? I'm not sure. That's a real ethical conundrum. Would you know if you were born a lizard person or can you be like adopted into the- I think you know. We're such professionals. We really are. Buckle up, bitches. It's time to have some soup. I'm Amy with a Y. And I'm Amy with an I. And we're just two blueberries floating in a bowl of tomato soup. And we have a third blueberry in our soup bowl this evening, a very special guest. And for once, Amy with an I is the one that arranged everything. So that's impressive. First time right? like, ever. Yeah. I mean, it's it <laughs> was a true. heroic effort. <laughs> I, got, I got Lydia. <laughs> that's true. You did a very good job with Lydia. Thank you. You're supposed to get David Smalley on the show. I don't know why you Do haven't you done that Do you want me to get yet. David Smalley? Because I can probably get David Smalley. <laughs> I, I really don't want David Smalley. He likes um, me. Before, we, you know what, actually, why don't you introduce the guest and then we'll go through the Patreon and then she can chime in too if she wants to make fun of Rich or something. Sure. I mean, Does she... Does that sound good? Yeah, she should say shit about Rich for sure. Perfect. Okay. Um. So this is my friend, Christina. We've known each other for about six years Five or six years? Something like that. Is that about how long? Yeah, I probably around something that long. Like that. Something forever, like that. Forever. 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 <laughs> We've known each other for a long time. We kind of just, after I left my, I've left the church, I joined like local atheist community. We kind of run in the same circles and we just kind of became, the circles got smaller, you know, and we became just pretty good friends. Um, well, I believe it was one dinner we went out to one night and then you and I just hit it off. So. Yes. Yes. <laughs> We did. We absolutely hit it off. Oh, yeah. So I remember that dinner. <laughs> did you? She, she almost got us thrown out of the restaurant. I'm just saying. No, shush, no. <laughs> okay, maybe. Like something bit. Amy would do. Yeah. I was, I was probably egging her on. But no, we've, yes. known, we've known each other for through a number of years. We've, um, we kind of are in the same tight knit group of friends where we all kind of, we're basically family and we all work, we're all there for each other through everything like we've been through so much together as a group and so, so did you that's how you get an we in on say the her show. first name yeah did we what? say your names did we say her first name christina okay i didn't know if you'd i couldn't <laughs> i honestly couldn't remember if you had said that <laughs> i don't think anyways i'm christina <laughs> yes this is christina Introductions 101, Amy. Yes. I said it first. I said, this is my friend, Christina. You were so, We've known each other for six okay. years. Okay. Perfect. I, I can't remember from two minutes ago. I'm bad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, so Let the record show I'm not a jerk. Oh, God. <gasps> you know what? Hopefully Nathan's not listening this week. I'll just ignore it. Nathan, and... let the record show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> let the record show He'll... Christina's known her for six years. She is. Don't worry. Yeah. Like... <laughs> Nathan will be the ultimate judge. So True. <laughs> It's true. He so, called himself the podcast historian. So yes, exactly, and he's very good at it. We pay him well <laughs> to do that. So um, we, if you were just joining us for the first time, or if you've been with us for a while, you will know that we have a Patreon page, much like every other podcast yeah, in we the do. universe. Um, but ours is the best because I said so, and because ours has all kinds of soup puns in it and alliteration and people like that it's so brilliant if you, it really is i mean we're smart people so if you want to get in on the action and give us your money which why the fuck wouldn't you i mean we're delightful you can go to patreon.com slash secular soup and we have all these cool different levels like the tomato soup level chicken noodle beef noodle uh i can't remember the rest of them but they're all pretty good and now we have the devil's chili level which is six dollars and sixty six cents at that level, you'll get a shout out on every show. And that's, you know, for the $1 and up per month patrons, you get early access to all the episodes and you get free access to all of our 
extras, like our Raw Men series, of which we really need to record another one. I know. I'm yeah, so, come on. What's I wrong know, with you? Why I'm haven't just you? so busy. <laughs> God. No, to Anyways. be fair, it was my fault the last time. It was. Yeah, it's we just trade off. Like first it'll be her fault, then it's my fault. And then it works out good because it's I mean ultimately you know, it's still it's your very, fault somehow. Split very evenly, whatever. So whatever. But if you would like to join us at the six dollar and sixty six God say that five times fast level a month. My brain's broken. It's it's evening time. Um Oh, it's after seven. See? I turned into a babbling Something that I don't know. At I don't the, know. I've seen you at past midnight, so I don't know. I was up past midnight last night, and it was crazy. That's probably why oh, my yeah, brain's You were texting up. me. I was like, how are you even awake? Yeah. I was watching Drag Queens. No um, not what we're here to talk about, though. We're here to talk about Patreon. Yeah. Although I could talk about the Drag Queens all night. So yeah. at our We're going to let Christina talk at some point. We're going to try. We're going to really no, try. It's going to be cool. I'll sit here. It's fine. It's going to be Just so Just listening to his live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so at that devil chili level we have got natalie nuggin freethinker 215 and ralph wiggum support the national abortion federation <laughs> don <laughs> ford voice of fantasy and adventure and shmishtina i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly what I'm do you think sure. christina does that sound <laughs> i'm not sure it sounds very similar huh. to my name but <laughs> it does but it starts Super with a shma sound i wonder so. if she's my doppelganger <laughs> could be that could be really creepy. You should find out. I do At have the, a doppelganger, though. I will say that. Do you? Did you kill her yet? No, you, she you, lives in another country. Like I found a, oh. a, like an artist piece of her. Oh, you know, yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. Someone sent it to me. I was like, "That is me. That's really creepy." But you know, if you kill her, you can absorb her powers and like, yeah. her essence. <sighs> well, I have a new mission in life now. Yes, thank Plus, you. Plus, then she can't commit do identity that. fraud and steal your whole identity. Like, there's you I just you need to be slightly prettier that was than me too. Super freaky. She, she is not oh, at all. You definitely need to. She's kill slightly her, prettier, so. so I have. She has to go. No, she has to go. God, you're crazy. Yep. So, at the ten dollar a month level, we have got Elven Engineer, Wendy, Yesh, and our Christina. Pick a random number between one and two hundred. Um, uh, one hundred and seventy-three. Our 173rd favorite Sorry. rich. Did you hear that, Sorry, rich? rich? She hates you. I think that's you. the worst number ever. She, that's she has heard about you. She must have seen the live show and oh met my you. Oh, my God. That was so harsh. Like, just the worst To be fair, ever. I was going to say 18, so yeah, she's well, my he knows friend. what he did. He, he has a lot of making up fine. to do. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's got to earn it. He has to earn my love. That's yep. fair. That's very fair. I mean, he already has such a so many cards stacked against him because he's a man. Yeah, obviously, obviously. and he's a white man, and there's just all Ugh, the it's the worst. Oh god, I didn't even know that. Like, what? I know. Yeah, I didn't want to so lead with that because I didn't want to like gross you out. I don't anything. know, muddy up yeah. your number. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want to influence it too much. Exactly. At the twenty dollar a month level, which is our premier, only rock star rich people donate at this level. And I can only fathom being this wealthy to be able I've to donate to us this 20. much money. Yeah, <laughs> but at over 20 and over a month, $20 a month, we have got our favorite, favorite patron, Ashley. Ashley, we love you. We say it every week, but you're our favorite. She's a, she's a chick doctor, so that's cool. I wonder what right. kind of Porsche she drives. <laughs> I don't know. I bet it's a nice <laughs> what one. What is she doing with the second boat? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we've also got Randall, who's, as always, just fine. Just not Ashley. <laughs> he's just fine. <laughs> he's just not Ashley. But I mean, he's, he's no Ashley. <laughs> he's no Ashley. But he's hanging out there and he's doing a great job. Yeah, uh, well done. He's still here, unlike like three other patrons <laughs> ditched us. So now we're back down to 45, which is killing me. Motherfuckers. Right? So yeah, Randall's at least so, still here. I appreciate that. And then mm-hmm. our next, our second place patron uh, is called Second Place Patron. <laughs> that's that's their that's their formal name. So thank you, <laughs> second place it. patron, for your pledge of thirty three dollars and thirty three cents a month. That will buy they us. They're so awesome. All kinds of meth. We appreciate it. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> and coming in once again at our top spot. And just keep in mind, people, you could get in on this action. You could be the top patron. You could fight with these two over who can give us more money. Doesn't that and sound like fun? And you'd probably be better at it because you know, yeah, they're both guys. They're Your dreams guys. could come true. You can do this. There's, there's so many out I was going to freak out the second place patron and send him a text the week after we were in St. Louis. 
and mm-hmm. ask him what time dinner was because I was going to assume dinner was every Friday night at his house. <laughs> <laughs> but I forgot, and then it was like three weeks later. I'm like, it's too late now. Damn it! But that's that what I was going to do. do. I know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so top patron, drum roll please. Once again, top patron is Nathan Dickey is a real swell dude, and as we explained last Dickey. week. <laughs> Not Nathan Dickey. Nathan Dickey is a real swell dude. That is a true statement. Yes, he's awesome. But this person is actually Other Nathan, podcast historian. So that's that's his new name, Other Nathan. That's funny. So yes, thank you all so much for your monies. It helps us actually pay for like a website to do this on. And if you heard last week's Headphones episode, you when know we can't find them. Yeah, cords when you last break week them. Show, you know we're poor as fuck so this is the only way we can podcast and we appreciate it so much so oh, yeah. done Christina with the sales heard pitch. it yet but we talked about um filing for bankruptcy it was fun it was a good time it's a real good episode part. so mm-hmm. yeah so anyway that's it for the patrons i've gotten all of that housekeeping out of the way although i will say we're still working on that second live drunk cast like we want to get drunk on youtube live again but we won't do it until we get to 50 patrons we were up to 48 for a little while and now we're back down to 45 get your shit together apparently people. last on. time i was on some kind of drunk live something i tried to take my shirt off <laughs> she did it could happen I did. again amy was I'm filming it could happen again it could happen again christina's seen me day drinking oh, oh yeah I'm sh- no, I'm i would surprised. leave i would leave the courthouse and go to christina's house and day drink mm-hmm. that was my i've seen you day drink that was a fun I mean. day <laughs> that was a fun day in the first part it wasn't it was like a day was, party it was nice. <laughs> so we did actually have like a topic right which is foreign to me i don't understand topics yeah. but to do everybody. you want to <laughs> do you amy want to just kind of talk a little bit about why you invited christine on and kind of the gist of what you guys are going to talk she about she wouldn't stop messaging me mm-hmm. <laughs> and finally i was like fuck it fine <laughs> yeah when you have a podcast all your friends bug you oh, just all okay, they're so interesting show. and important <laughs> oh, right. clearly please <laughs> i actually have had friends that are like i should be on your show i'm like talking about what Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're not, not gonna say you're boring but no yeah. yeah um no christina we had the the episode a couple weeks ago about death and she sent me a message she was like you talked about death without me you bitch <laughs> <laughs> pretty much my episode it's a solid pretty message. much verbatim <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah because <laughs> nice. um, we wanted to talk about um going through a, a death and a trauma without religion and especially in a very conservative area mm-hmm how it is with your children and neighbors and family and friends and everything. So yeah, I thought that she would be able to just tell her story and then we can kind of shit on the religious people around here that don't know how to, Perfect. Uh, that don't know how to really be compassionate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Christina, what's your, what's your story? What's your deal? Tell us something about you. <laughs> Oh, well, here we go. Start at the very um, beginning. Start from conception. I want the whole story. <laughs> I, have the, I have the video. She doesn't. Because that's when life begins. I'm just saying. Oh, Chapter God. one, I am born. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> and you, you, um, just as much as you want to share, you know. Just, no, yeah. it's fine. No. So um, I'll, I'll start at basically it was a, about a year ago now, um, which seems kind of crazy yeah. that it was a year ago. Um, in 18 days, it'll mark a year. Um, that me, well, let me, let me go back and tell you a tale. No. Um, (laughs) so I'd been married, um, to my husband for almost 12 years and we have three kids. Um, at the time last year, they were 10, five and two. I really had to think about that. (laughs) All one year younger. Don't worry. Um, yeah. yeah. Just (laughs) their age now. Are my children exactly? Minus one. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Yeah. I don't do the math very well because I'm a lady. I know. So exactly. Exactly. I understand. Um, uh, so I found out a year ago, um, last November, that uh, my husband was unfaithful. And so I filed for a divorce. Um, it was a big, long story. It was more than just being unfaithful, but it was a bunch oh, of yeah. stuff. And um, so long story, <laughs> very short, over three weeks, um, more and more came to light and um, three weeks from the day that I found out, he decided to kill himself. 
Oh, leaving me with all three kids. And we lived on a farm, like in the middle of nowhere of 12 acres with all these animals. And yeah, so that was fun. It was super. Oh my God. Yeah, it was a a huge shock. My husband was never depressed. He was never, um, there was like, it was a total shock to everybody who knew him. You know, it was a total crazy move. Um, But yeah, after that, it was, the the amount of um like to just stay with this you know theme of this podcast and everything mm-hmm. the religious people i dealt with was quite odd i would say mm-hmm. um we had a like cuz he, he killed himself this well we we found his body december 19th and mm-hmm. um yeah like so that's 6 days before christmas right which is oh, awful oh god which is also 11 days before our 12th kids. anniversary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, it sucked. And um, so the, the city that I was living in at the time was a very small city, a very small town. Mm-hmm. So obviously everyone knew. I'm like the only atheist in this like small town. Yeah. So that's also awkward. You know, most of the people know me and they're like, oh, no, but she's cool. You know, she's even though. She's one of the though, good ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She looks super Christian, mm-hmm. but she's not. Y'all ever get that? Mm-hmm. Amy gets it all the time. Yeah, I just I I, I tell them I'm I'm assuming you mean white, and they back down. Yeah. Like, oh no, that's like, not what so I mean. I look white, like that's what you mean. Like I got them. You look, oh, so, but you white. look so Christian. I'm like, what does that even mean? Like, I ask them to explain themselves because they never can. I don't. Did you see the swastika on my forehead or not? Like clearly, <laughs> no it's worn it down. Me. No I one covered up to me very well with a, makeup. Yeah, I have a fantastic resting bitch you face. You really so. do. I am jealous of your resting bitch face. It's oh, good. No, it's I have the opposite of resting bitch face. I know, the me opposite. too. Yeah, resting like, smile I am the most, face. No, yeah. it's approach the fuck out of me face. Me too. Like, <laughs> yes. yeah. and me too. People stop me, and they're like, just like talking. I'm just like, oh my god, stop. Yeah, I have I look friends like the who will tell fucking me. Person. <laughs> I'll see friends but in the grocery not. store. You're not. And they won't. They won't say hi to me, and then they'll tell me later that I looked like I was ready to murder everyone. And I'm like, no, it's just grocery shopping. Like that's and just I'm what I look like. I'm the opposite. Like. I look super friendly, and people will approach me, and I will mm. murder everyone. Yeah, Straight it's up. weird. Weird but how that works. The other day, I was in freaking Walmart. Okay, I had my headphones in. I'm like on a mission. This is totally off course. Of what we we're talking about. I'm on yeah. a mission. <laughs> you heard the show. Stops me, and it's like I know you look like you're really busy, and then he continues to hit on me. Oh my god. I was like, what? This is why don't I have the bitch face? Like I need to. I want it so badly. (laughs) Like I don't. This is obvious. All these things, like these outside things, I do not want to be talked to. Don't talk to me. Yeah, (laughs) dudes. We don't all want you to come and hit on us at all times. Like if we're just going to Walmart to shop, just fucking just go away. Like sometimes we just don't want you coming up to us and the headphones are a real big indicator. (laughs) Just saying. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Jesus. So anyway, so um, they had a the small town that we were in. Um, they had Mr. and Mrs. Claus come out, right, to come bring toys and stuff to my kids and oh. come see us. And so this was like you know a few days after basically everything had happened. Uh-huh. And um, so they come out with a pastor. Oh. So that's fun. Um, and bring these kids. I, I swear to God, more toys than I'd bought them for Christmas. You know, these yeah. kids got like, they banked that Christmas, just FYI, <laughs> like because of everything. So, it's a huge, horrible tragedy. You will get all the toys you fucking want. Yeah. Um, Were you, don't tell my kids that. <laughs> yeah. Are you a, for, I didn't even catch this because again, I'm a bad listener, but are you a former Mormon too? Or were you from a different no, religious background? No, no, not background? at all. No, I grew up. Okay. No, I. Uh, I sorry, know I other even, people, Amy. What? <laughs> Not everyone she knows is former Mormon. No, yeah, I, I grew up um, semi-religious. Just the ones I sleep with, apparently. <laughs> but I knew, like, from a young age, like, I, I started suspecting from a very young age, like, I'd say, like, fourth grade or so. I was like, this is kind of not adding up here you know mm-hmm. and so from then on i was just like mm. and then basically by college i was like yeah no that's i don't believe any of that stuff <laughs> sounds like um, me yeah so, so i was good. never like super duper religious or anything like that mm-hmm. um so but the baptist church came out and you know and apparently the pastor's wife's son or grandson i can't remember had committed suicide like the week before 
Oh, oh yeah. my God. So that was also difficult. So I was like, listen, you know, oh. I give her a hug. I was like, you know, she's crying. I'm crying. She's mm-hmm. like, we can't cry in front of the kids. I'm like, okay. And then the pastor who's there comes up and he's like, I just wanted to, you know, have you accepted Jesus in your life? <gasps> and I was like, oh my God. I just looked at him like a deer in <sighs> head, like, are you fucking kidding me right now? <laughs> like, what? Wow. I was like, I'm just not, I'm, thank you. But no, I'm, I'm not super religious, you know, like, like, well, if you ever want to, and they like gave me all these cards and like, they invited me to church and which I get, you know, for them is the way they want to help, you know, mm-hmm. right. which is so many, like, it's funny when you go through this kind of thing, how much you have to cater to other people's feelings, even though yes. you're going through something very, very massively difficult. Yeah. Um, but yet you still have to. Do you still find yourself making sure that they're comfortable with you and that yes, you're not, you yes, know, like, exactly. like you, you're like, don't bring, you don't it, don't it bring up to anything too, too uncomfortable. Well, yeah. it's kind don't of like, sad. you know, when you, when you post things and people say they're praying for you or, you know, you're in our prayers or, you know, oh, I got so many PMs too. Like God takes care of widows, oh. literally got P- PMs like that. And it's just like, it's so angering at one point. Cause you're like. Well, and that's got to add to the... You, you know I'm atheist. You know, like, I'm not I'm not a closet atheist. So, yeah, you're you're grieving and you're trying to deal with your kids and doing all this and you're trying to deal with all this other bullshit on top of it because people won't leave you alone with their religious preferences. Like, it's... The worst part is you know they're well-intentioned, you know? Yeah. Like, they mean the best. So, I don't mm-hmm. want to, like shit on them for that, you know, because yeah. they're, they're helping in the way that they know how. And I mm-hmm. think I did make a, a Facebook post at one point about, listen, guys, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I know you think you're helping me by saying you are praying for me and all of this stuff. And I, I do appreciate the sentiment, mm-hmm. but at the same, you know, on the flip side, when you comfort someone, you know, when you say words of comfort, it's to comfort the other person. Not yourself, yeah. not self-serving, nothing like that. When you tell me you're going to pray for me, it's not comforting me at all. So it doesn't yeah. help when you tell me that. Like, you can pray for me. That's fine with me. But you telling me doesn't actually help. And you would be surprised how many people got offended by that. Well, maybe really? you wouldn't be surprised. But no, a lot fine. of people did. They're like, well, I'm just trying to do a nice thing. And, you know, this is what I believe. I'm like, that's great. You can believe mm-hmm. that. But if you're wanting to make me feel better, you're failing. Yeah. Yeah, because you know, all and, that does is make them feel better because they've helped you in the way that they want. Well, and exactly. And that's way, kind of puts, where the buck drops, I think, for them. They're like, oh, well, if you're not going to take my, you know, thoughts and prayers, then. I mean, you God know, bless, I guess. Bitch. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it seems like it works out great either way for them because if they say it, that makes them feel good, like they're doing something. Well, and everyone and, sees it. But if you say anything about it, then they get to be the victim of somebody who's overreacting. And why won't people just let me pray for someone? And it's it puts all of the focus on them and not on you when you're the one going through some shit. Well, exactly. And that's why I like, and this is not, you know, an immediate thing. It was like a couple months down the road that I, mm-hmm. you know, brought this up to people that was like, hey, just FYI, every time you tell me you're praying for me on my posts that I say yeah. something, you know, like it's not helping and this is why. And I would get into, you know, a sort of constructive, I thought, con- conversation with them saying, mm-hmm. okay, no, but this is why this is not helping. And mm-hmm. it would still, it always ends up the same way, which is very disappointed that disappointing that like no one will actually listen to what a grieving person needs as opposed mm-hmm. to what their own self-serving um, wants are. So, oh, also, so planning a funeral Secularly oh. here, very difficult, mm-hmm. um, which I'd never ever thought of before. Um, I literally at the funeral director home or the funeral home, um, the funeral director was like, I'm not really sure how to help you. And this is a big funeral what? home here. Yeah. He was like, I don't know how to do it. Like, I don't have any suggestions for who can run the memorial. Oh my God. Yeah. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like, um, he's like, well, you know, we have these pastors and these ministers and all this. I'm like, well, I don't want a religious ceremony, you know, because he yeah. was atheist as well. Yeah. And um, so, you yeah, no, wouldn't I have to, any? Huh? 
You'd think he'd have some suggestions if he was an atheist. You can't be the first person. Well, no, no, my husband was an atheist. The, uh, oh, okay. The, the okay. funeral director was not. Uh, oh, okay, I, I, was, I thought the funeral was director was like, oh my God, he doesn't have yeah. any suggestions and no, he's an atheist? I assume he wasn't. <laughs> I assume he wasn't. He didn't say okay, he was, yeah. so. But you can't possibly be the first secular person no, he's ever come across who needed a that's funeral. That's what I thought. That's just ridiculous. That's like. I don't know, bad business you know, moves. There's more than, and I know even it's then. It's Texas. Like, that's kind of the way it goes. Like, ugh. even if you're atheist, you still play nice for your family. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. for everybody else around. And I even thought about doing yeah. that, too. I was like, well, maybe I should have a religious ceremony just for all of his, more of his friends. And I was like, eh, screw it. No. Yeah. I'm not going to do this that. Isn't, it's no so longer I had to it. actually it's... ask on our local group. Be like, hey, anybody here? Um. You know who maybe I could get to uh, officiate my dead husband's funeral? Like, <laughs> yeah. because all I can oh, find are, pre- are preachers. And so mm-hmm. we ended up finding someone. He was a a, um, a rabbi. I couldn't even find a secular person. He was a rabbi. And which luckily he was very, very nice. He was, um, he worked with a police department locally and um, helped them out through stuff. So he interviewed with me and he was super sweet and he did the whole thing very secularly you know went over it with me um Mm. because we had such a weird situation anyway and was sort of a counselor a little bit for me and you know up until the time uh up until the funeral uh so he actually was really good so fyi if you're ever secular find a good rabbi um yeah they're they're generally pretty good they're (laughs) usually secular too and fairly liberal yeah yeah Depends on kind of what flavor of Judaism. Well, yeah, but the more on, I'm, I'm lumping all all Jews in the same. As you should, yeah. they all <laughs> like th- you. Do. They all produce the same Jew gold, so Jew gold. it doesn't really oh matter. God. Oh my God. <laughs> Amy is anti-Semitic. I'm saying it here. I ju- I'm not oh, anti-Semitic. I just think Jews run the world. No, we never do. I know. And <laughs> that they're in charge of everything and they're out to get us. That's not, that's not that doesn't mean I'm against <laughs> them. Like, it's, or a, I hate it's them. a good thing. It's a compliment. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, it's a compliment. So bad. Oh so my God. Bad. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Rabbis. See, you're not going to ruin the show, Christina. Amy will. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what I do every week. You're good. Not bringing it down too bad. No, um, you're you. good. Amy's going to be all anti Semitic and talk about Jew gold. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> It's all so fine. Did, Everything's fine. Did the did his other friends and family um were they upset about the funeral you ended up having? Like was there any tension there as far no. as No. Well, I didn't know his work friends very well and mm-hmm. all his family. My my husband was actually from South Africa. And so oh, all his okay. family lives in Africa. Oh. And did not come. Oh wow. None of them came. So, yeah, there's that. But, you know, it is a long journey. I'm going to, you know, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. I get it. Um, mm-hmm. And so I don't know. If, if they had any problems with it, they did mm-hmm. not tell me. Yeah. Um, which is probably good because I would have probably gone off on them yeah. at that point. You know, like, yeah. maybe don't tell me. So if they, if, if they ever did, I never heard it. Um, mm-hmm. But I do wonder, like, how many people kind of came to be like, I wonder what an atheist funeral is like, you know, like <laughs> there's no praying. We don't know how to act. What's going on. They're playing Pink Floyd songs. What's going on. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> they're all wearing black robes and trying to yeah. eat babies. I don't get it. I mean, that's just normal. Yeah. That's they're a, passing that's around whiskey. Potluck. What? No, I wish, mm-hmm. but <laughs> right. But yeah, so, so did, the funeral went okay. Did people try to help your kids through the same types of things saying they would pray for them. And like, did your kids get a lot of that focused on them too? Not that I know of. Um, they have through the years, I think just in general, mm-hmm. but I don't think in this circumstance that it was any more than usual. More than usual. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I don't think a lot. Well, okay. A, and I know I'm going on like a public podcast saying this. So hey. here we go. My children do not know the um, cause of their father's death. Okay. I told them that he died in a car accident because they're all, I think, too young right now to understand it. Mm -hmm. I will be telling them when they're older. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So they don't, I just didn't want them because obviously we were already going through a divorce and he moved out and I don't want them thinking that they could have done anything to 
prevent it or that they did anything to cause it, you know? Right. So, yeah. um, it's, that's a very it's good one of those point. Everything was, it's enough to process as it is. Exactly. Right. And so I, I feel like as each of them come to the right age that I think that they're able to hear it, mm-hmm. I will tell them. Um, cause yeah. honestly, I don't want them finding that out on their own. If they ever come across the death certificate, they will see it. You know, yeah. like it's, it's clear as in writing what happened. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think, especially at the time of his death at 10, five and two, that yeah, they could have no. processed that information. And my oldest son also has a bunch of health issues he's going through. And so it's just like, let's oh, not man. burden them anymore. Let's not. Oh, um, yeah. So a lot to deal with. Yeah. Um, so I think, uh, because of, their ages and stuff like that. A lot of people have not given them a lot of like heaven talk or anything Mm -hmm. like that. Um, Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Um, And we've had, I've had some very good, very, you know, secular friends who have like one of my friends who lost her her husband um, several years ago and she had, you know, three kids as well, sent us a whole bunch of books that were, you know, secular children's books about death um, by the way, I can give you those if you want to link. Them I was going to say, yeah, They're, give me a link. I'll put them in the show notes. Yeah. Amazing. They're very good. Sweet. Um, and it just, it talks about it, you know, like as a natural thing and it doesn't have any mention of God or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And so we read those to the kids and, or I read those to the kids and, um, that was a really big help because a lot of books out there and stuff, especially for children or in, in general are all religiously skewed. Yeah. yeah, they become so an it's angel, they're watching over you. Yeah, like, Whatever. oh, they're in a better place where you'll see them again. Oh, that light, they're in a better place. <gasps> yeah, that one's the, are they, though? Everything happens they? for a reason. Uh, everything happens for a reason. Ugh, it's the okay. worst. So, <laughs> I have a fun Come story. Come on, I'm getting you started. <laughs> yeah, everything happens for a reason. So I, I started seeing someone, um, like, <laughs> a poor decision on my part. Um, pretty quickly after he, <laughs> my husband died, cause I, it, we had a tumultuous relationship before yeah. and I was very angry and it was just a bunch of stuff. So I started seeing someone and this guy like kind of fell a little bit, a little bit hard quickly. And he was like, you're adorable. Yeah. And he basically, he told me, he's like, everything happens for a reason. And I believe I met you for a reason and we're together for a reason. And I just was like, oh my God. I backed up and I was like, um, the fuck? Excuse mm-hmm. me. Goodbye. So, and it, but FYI, he was also religious. Of course. So this is my, I was in a. Like, I didn't know that. I would have slapped you. I know. It was a bad decision. <laughs> I was fine. traumatized. Okay. I was okay, traumatized okay. and making poor decisions. I would have slapped you gently. <laughs> yeah. So no, he was very religious. And, it's very um, religious. Not very, but I mean. Keeps getting worse though. <laughs> more religious than I would have wanted. And so. Um, he was like, oh, yeah, everything happens for a reason. I just looked at him point blank, and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I was like, yeah. I can't believe you just fucking said that to me. And I, this is exactly what I said to him. I was like, don't ever say that to me again. I was like, if you think that my husband died so that you could date me, then you are fucked up. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. No. And he, like, you immediately, are... you know, backtracked. He was like, oh, I didn't even think of it that way. I and I was like, I yeah, no, mean, didn't. I didn't mean you're like, fuck you. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was like, you didn't. Obviously, like what a stupid thing to say to me. Like, yeah. It's just anybody. a stupid thing to say to anybody ever. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. What is stupid Especially when say. they're grieving and just no. No, no, no. Yeah, just like, take that it, out of well, your vocabulary. Don't use that phrase anymore. Turns out he was mm-hmm. not a very smart person. So there we go. <laughs> Shocking. Really? Yeah, trauma. Yeah. Huh. When, you, when you're going through trauma, you make weird decisions. So yeah. the most religious um, people I know tend to be the smartest. So that's weird. Yeah, that's oh yeah, weird. yeah. <laughs> for he sure, must have been that sure. one, the one. Yeah, that, that was one. Not super smart. For sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah, the only one I've met. Like, that. so how did you? I'm just curious. I'm curious about because as a mom, like I picture myself in that situation, and it would be, it would just be so heartbreaking to try to get your kids through that while you're trying to get through it at the same time. You know, do you have, did you have like any kind of support structure? Do you have close relatives close by or anything? Yeah. My, uh, my parents had moved down about a year before and I was close to my neighbors. Um, I will tell you that telling your kids that your their dad is is the worst thing you will ever have to do. Period. Religious, not religious period. It's, it's horrible. Um, but honestly, like, I don't remember a lot of that 
first couple of months afterwards. Oh, sure. Like I had bits and pieces of it. Um, yeah. It was, I, I hear that happens to a lot of people. I've read books on it and, you know, of death and, and um, especially yeah, you traumatic trauma death. brain. You, you yeah. just shut it off. Yeah, yeah. You just, you do, you know, you're, you're on survival mode and especially with all these dates that came up, like all these firsts that came up so quickly with Christmas and my mm-hmm. wedding anniversary. And then in January, two of my children's birthdays are in January. My husband's birthday was in February. So it was just a three months of just ugh, every couple of weeks was some sort of reliving of this trauma. Um, and so I don't remember a lot of it. Um, but my kids are young enough also, especially the two year old and the five year old mm-hmm. that it was kind of just for the most part business is normal. And my oldest son was going, has been going through a bunch of, like I said, medical difficulties involving his brain. He's has intractable oh, no. epilepsy. And so he started having more seizures. And so I'm not mm-hmm. sure how much he retained of it either okay. um, during that time. So it was just, it was this huge, like all these other things were going in, into the works um, when all this was happening. Um, yeah. I know you said you had some books for the kids about death, but like how mm-hmm. I, a lot of people wonder as atheists, what we tell our kids about what happens after death, you know, mm-hmm. like, because Christian parents or religious parents have this kind of it easy seems out. like it's so much easier, you know? <clears throat> Where they can just say, he's in a wonderful place right now. It's, right. You know, it seems be so, so much, much easier. easier. Since we don't have that, we have to tell the truth, but it's hard to do that. Ugh. So, did you, like, how much do they know, I guess, about, or did they ask much about what happens when you die? Did they have a lot of questions that... Um, they haven't really, I've I've raised them without religion, you know, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, so my oldest is definitely, he, I don't know if he understands, but he kind of knows. Um, because they've asked me before they said, you know, where is he? And I said, well, he's, he's gone. Mm -hmm. You know, his, his body is, is gone. He's gone. Mm -hmm. I said, but we remember him, you know, in our hearts and in our, in our memories. And that's, that's how he lives still, you know, obviously is, Mm -hmm. is, through how we remember him and how we love him. I said, our love doesn't right. die. Yeah. You know, he, his body may be dead. He may be dead. We may not ever see him again, but the love we feel and the memories we have are always there. Yeah. You know, oh, so that's just, always real. So um, my heart just but breaks. It is hard. Oh, I'm sorry. Like, oh, like, downer no. episode. Um, <laughs> Amy's but, usually a downer. It's fine. For we can sure. make dick jokes later. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. But it is hard. Like I know my um, my son's teacher last year, my middle son's teacher last year, they were talking about like Stephen F. Austin or something like that, and she mentioned how he was in heaven, mm. and yeah. And so my son comes home and he's like, "Yeah, you know, Stephen F. Austin is in heaven, and Daddy's in heaven." And I was like, "I've got to write an email." Like, mm. oh no. <laughs> and so, well, actually, I texted her because we were pretty good friends, and I was like. Well, ish friends, you know, enough that I had her phone number. And I was like, hey, so my kid came home today talking about how his daddy's in heaven. And um, I just, you know, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I'm but, just disappointed. <laughs> don't fucking do that. No, yeah. like, yeah. Could like, you not? Yeah, I, I'm not mad. And I understand, you know, that, that, that there can be awkward questions in class and that you don't always know how to answer them and, you know, things like that. I said, but you may not know this, but we are not religious. And this is not, and especially with my son going through what he's gone through the last, you know, couple months, I said, I you played you know, the fucky widow card. Oh, dude. All year. All year you can play that <laughs> shit. I've used it. I've used it. Trust me. Um, because when. <laughs> You're like, you, you know, it really you is should. hard as a young widow of three children. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, um, so I just said, you know, I would appreciate it if maybe you just didn't say that kind of thing in, in class. You yeah, know, because we're not, not like that. And don't I don't want to confuse him at home. Um, don't you know, tell yada, my kid yada. his dad's in heaven. Yeah. 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 And uh she she did apologize. She's like, I'm sorry, you know, another kid mentioned it in class and I just kinda ran with it and I was like, Yeah, don't do that. Don't. Yeah. If someone but brings I, it up, you say, mm, that's what you believe. Not what yeah, everyone believes. I mean, and or I, just I, I say, get being in an awkward situation. You know, I get being in an yeah. awkward situation with a bunch of fucking five year olds. You know, well, yeah. especially well, since it's a say. teeny tiny town, everybody's Christian. Duh. Exactly. There's mm-hmm. like two kindergarten classes or whatever. You know, it's very, very small. Um 
But Ugh. I was still like, oh, God, I don't want to confuse the kid. You know, like, I definitely don't want him to believe that there's this, some crazy place in the sky that his dad went. You know, like, he needs, yeah. even if he is young, you should still believe the truth from the beginning. You know, yeah, as hard as it may be. Like, that that's sucks, hard enough when you're not going through when you're not going through this, it's hard enough to deal with wanting to raise your kids with the truth and having other people not butt in their viewpoints about death. But then when you're yourself going through this, it's, I don't know, it's just, it just sounds so well, yeah, frustrating already to me. I can't. Yeah. Already yeah, I'm going through grief and I have to like try and protect my kids and everything. Exactly. And, but I do feel like when you're teaching your kids, these things, like even obviously I think most atheist parents are not going to like tell them about some imaginary, you know, place in the sky where their, their relatives are going. But can you imagine growing up thinking that and then finding out it's not true? Like already you're going through this trauma of losing someone and not being able to see them for a very long time. Mm -hmm. If you get in, if you get into the special club, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the other thing. Like if they got into this special club and you get into the special club, you're going to see them again. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, just know so that they're, they're there. Yeah, growing up with mm -hmm. that fear and that anxiety, number one, in my opinion. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but also... Then finding out later that, oh, maybe that's not true. It's like a second grief, I feel like, all, all together. So even oh, if they're yeah. young, I feel like you, even if it's a harsher reality, I think that they need to know that. I think it's easier to accept that harsh reality to begin with than it well, is. Well, to have the niceness pulled from them later. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah. Although it sure would be nice to believe something like that. It would. Really I wish I could. I wish I could too. I I miss that's one thing I miss about being religious is I miss having the answers. I know yeah. nothing. Like I literally know nothing. Someone's like, "What happens after whatever? What happens now?" I'm like, "Oh, yeah." Well, and even like atheists are just we you we have we just don't believe God exists and we think we have all the answers. And no, it's the complete opposite. We have no, no fucking I literally idea. Know nothing. That's well, the whole I've, point. I've had <laughs> people tell that to me too. They're like, "That's so sad." Like, how do you? Oh yeah. How do you deal it's with that? Just like, that's the so truth. sad to not. To not think that you're going somewhere else. I'm like, it is sad. Yes, yeah. it's sad. Like, death is sad. Period. Yeah. Whether you're going it's, somewhere it's or not, like, death yeah, is it's sad. actually more sad if you don't have the platitudes of just. Well, that's why they're like, like, oh, it's so depressing. You know, like, how do you live with it? I'm like, well, it's because it's reality. Yeah, like, it's really depressing with someone you care about dies. Yeah, yeah. It's just straight it's up. sad. I don't know it's how to put it. Yeah, I so, yeah. It's, sad, it's sad. I've had someone ask me once if I, when they found out I didn't believe in God, and they're like, so you don't believe in, like, heaven or anything? Or, like, that anything happens after you die? And I said no. And they're like, well, what what keeps you from just, like, sh like jumping off the dock and drowning yourself in the lake? And I'm just like, what? Why? Because why then there would will be you? nothing. <laughs> exactly. Like, why would I What's do that? What's stopping you from doing that? Because you believe in heaven. Exactly. Like, would you go to heaven if you did that? Like... Yeah, what, I just you it, have a was, way better reason than I do. Was the implication that I must be so depressed at the thought of not having life after death that why continue to? It just made so little sense that to makes me. No and sense. I, yeah, well, I didn't even know how to sucks. respond no one to wants it. To die, <laughs> even if you know you're going, no. if you think you're going to heaven or hell, yeah. no. wherever you think you're going, if you're going it's to somewhere scary. else. Scary. Nobody but you really. You kind of wonder if people really believe it if they fight death so hard. You know. Mm -hmm. like, I don't really that believe too. you were going to some magical cloud place. Like, you would be wait? like, embrace it. Like, people, you can tell the people that really believe because they're just embracing it. They're like, cool, whatever happens, it happens. Everybody else is like, no, they're fighting it. Then well, why fight that cancer? Exactly. Yeah. Every yeah. time I hear about that. Obviously, the, it's from God. He gave it why to wear you. Just let him do hell. Who cares? Yeah. Exactly. Who was the mom, I think, in te the mom that had five kids that she drowned in the bathtub? And Yates. Yates. Andrea, Andrea Yates. Yates. Every Ugh. time I think about her, I just get super depressed because I feel for her so much. But then I think she was doing exactly that. She thought yeah. that that she was better. Believed. She, it, for her belief system, that made sense. And to watch all of the other Christians just shocked and, you know, how could she do something like that? Well, she's just doing exactly, you know. Yeah. She, Did you realize that story is literally in the Bible, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Someone sacrificing yeah, so their children. So why are we all so like shocked? Killing that, their own children. Yeah, and killing well, that one in their holy book. And then there's also the psych. <laughs> yeah. No, no, don't kill him. But the thing, like, I'm just if kidding. you feel called to it, obviously she felt called to do something, you know? Like, well, I feel like she's it's so, so weird that it, wrong. In the Bible, it was inspired, but in real, like in 
this day and age, she's crazy. Yeah. But that she doesn't make any sense to me. Protecting well, her so kids when a virgin and... is pregnant, that's crazy. Yep. <laughs> like, that's yeah. that's very crazy. Yeah, yes. I don't know. I, it makes no sense. Although I, God, I heard, I don't know where I heard it, but I, I'm just going to ramble about something I know nothing about. I heard at one point that when religions started really becoming popular, that the, you know, the edict against suicide was because so many people were, were dying from suicide because life was so shitty back in. That makes sense. I don't know when it was, but. I I watch way too many documentaries and they're all mixed together in my head. But yeah, part of the reason for that, for that becoming, you know, something that religious people say and believe is because, yeah, if you have a lot of people who look around and go, this is shit, I don't want to be here anymore, then you have to, and, and you've told them already there's a better place after this. And they're like, well, why am I here then? And they want to go to the better place. So they had to start telling them, no, this is a sin. You can't do that either. That's a sin. So if if you commit that sin, then you're not going to go to the good place. And that's, you know, in an attempt to keep them from doing that. And it's... That makes a lot of sense. It's just... By uh, the way, have you seen the show, good, The Good Place? It's really Yes, good. it's so okay. great. Yes. <laughs> Side note. Yes. Love that show. It's amazing. Very good show. <laughs> I love Janet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I am yes. still not caught up on it, but I have started watching it, and it's, yeah. It's, it's okay, I never started Peaky Blinders, it's fine. God damn I you. I haven't either. Motherfuckers. Yeah. You well, I didn't to know I was supposed to, number one. Get on the Killian Murphy train so I can talk to other people about how amazing fine. his face is. I, I'm, I work a lot, and tomorrow I start my new job at the new location, so I have to be normal again. Can't you just watch TV at work like, like you Like I texted Christina last last week, I'm like, I don't even know where all these tentacles go anymore. Like, I, don't, I can't, like, <laughs> so like draw them back inside and be normal. Mm-hmm. Just put some lipstick, or just put some nail polish on them, it'll be fine. Just <laughs> That's pretend what you like told you're like, pretend yeah. like their arms. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be fine. Bracelets and, and nail polish, no one will notice. That's what you t- Yep. That's her, uh, that's her answer to everything. That's what we do. Nail polish. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's my daughter's answer to everything. <laughs> <laughs> so I will say that one other thing is that's difficult is when you've gone through something like this and finding a therapist here. Oh, yeah. Very hard. Still haven't oh. found one I like. Oh, no. I've gone through two. I have some suggestions. I, I have some suggestions because I've worked in offices and stuff. Yeah, I'll have to take those from you because so the first one I found was was nice. He was fine. He was a pastor, number one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which but when I called him, I was like, so but can you do secular therapy? Because l- I'm pretty sure I need therapy after this. Mm-hmm. You know, like Well, who totally. wouldn't? I mean Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, <laughs> no, like, I am fairly a certain totally yeah, yes I'm I do. Fairly <laughs> certain I'm fucked up. So mm-hmm. Yeah, talk me through this. And so he's like, no, I am a pastor, you know, so I, but I can do secular therapy. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. Cool. Let's try this. And he yeah. was a very nice man. I will say that he did, he did great. I, I don't think I got much out of the therapy um, yeah. other than talking. Cause like when I went, he was like, oh, that's a lot. <laughs> like, yeah. your that's like, never encouraging when a therapist oh. says that to you when they're like oh that's a lot yeah. and you're like yeah duh yeah. <laughs> help me help me like aren't you the professional where's my toolbox please give like, me tools exactly he's like mm, okay so this is yeah. interesting I was like I know I'm gonna need therapy after listening <laughs> yeah. to your therapy that's yeah, why I'm when, here oh, because like, <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. you're like I'm only one person please help me mm-hmm. so he was really good at listening and he was really good at um when I, when I spoke to him and asking questions and things like that, I don't know if we like moved forward very much with therapy, but he was like, Oh, well, you know, do you read? Can I recommend books to you? Yada, yada. I was like, yes, I'm an avid reader. Please, you know, recommend whatever you can recommend to me. And then he would be like, "Mm." (laughs) like, well, I could recommend this, but I don't think it will work for you because it's religious. Or it's skewed this way. And I'm like, okay. Have you heard of the Bibble? Yeah. I'm like, no, no, it won't. And so it ended up, I ended up having to stop going because my son was sick and all this stuff. Have you read the book Heaven is Real? I recently was um, referred to another therapist that I went to. And um, it's an EFT, Emotionally Focused Therapy, which I thought would be really good for me. Because I don't think I need cognitive behavioral therapy because that's kind of a different thing like I yeah. no, I just need to be able to get through my shit you know and yeah. so um so someone um an, an EFT 
therapists are apparently it's kind of a new thing. It's a little bit more difficult to find. And so someone recommended this lady to me and I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. So message her, we set up an appointment and I go there. It's called the hope center. I'm like, mm, that's a, that's a little, that's kind that's of weird. Preachy. Mm-hmm. I get there and it's this huge building. Right. And so I, I'm in the parking lot and I'm looking it up. I'm like, what the hell is this building? Oh no, it's a huge church center. Right. Like huge oh church. Charity center. I'm like, like a oh, mega church okay. type thing. Yeah, and like the section she's in is a church counseling center. And I'm like, ugh. Okay, and I'm I'm literally sitting in the parking lot and I'm talking to the guy I'm seeing. I'm like, I don't even know if I want to go in. Like, this is a waste of time. And he's like, well, if you don't want to, you don't have to. And I was like, I know. I was like, well, I'm here. I'll just go in. So I go in and this is very ornate and beautiful. And there's like fountains and fireplaces. And it's a charity <laughs> organization, yeah. right? Which is already, yeah, I'm going God, in like, God oh. makes good money. Yep. So apparently, much money. Apparently God. this charity makes very good money. So I yeah. go up to this, you know, I have to have a badge to go up to this like second floor. And I go in and I sit down with her and I'm like, um, I just want to say like to begin with, I'm not sure if this is going to work. Like I, I thank you for spending time with me, whatever, but and there's crosses on the wall, <laughs> like everywhere around me. I was like, in Bible verses. I was like, oh God, I'm in the wrong place. And um, so, yeah, so I was like, I don't know if this is going to work. Um, and she's like, no, no. And she told me she could do this secular therapy thing. So we had our like initial session and all this. But I was just like, I, I, I stopped. I didn't go again because I was like, I can't, number one, it's a religious organization, um, yeah. like a religious yeah. charity. And I'm like, I don't feel right giving my money to that, which well, sounds like just block out. I mean, if you're in her office and she's got all of this stuff, it's not like you can just forget that she has this background, even if she's trying to be secular, it's still in your face. And, you know, exactly. And she did. I mean, to her credit, she was not a bad therapist and she didn't, she was like, I can totally make this to where, you know, it's, it's secular. I'm in this, this religious organization, but I can make it secular, yada, yada, yada. And I was like, okay, that's great. But I was just thinking, I was like, if I have to walk into that building every day and give my money to these people every day or not every day, you know what I mean? Like every week or two weeks or a month or whatever, I was like, I, <laughs> it's not going to motivate me very much. You're going to be sick a lot on those days. Yeah, and then I was fearing, like, I'm, I might have the same Maybe problem as this other guy to where they're like, oh, yeah, I see what you mean, but I have no references for you. I can't direct you to any other help. I can't um, give you any books or guidance or, or support groups or anything, you know. Um, well, this is a good place you. to put a link for the re, uh, the Secular Therapy Project. So anybody mm-hmm. who's listening, so go what? to the Secular Therapy Yep. There's a secular There's therapy a website. Project. It's called the Secular Therapy Project and secular therapists can go on there and register mm-hmm. to be in it. So what you can do as someone looking for a therapist is you and I'm pretty sure my recommendation is on there because I'm pretty sure I added her. Yeah, it's oh. it's these therapists self-select onto this list so they see that it's a secular yeah. thing and then you can type in your zip code and it won't tell you these therapists names right off the bat. It'll tell you, you know, here's a woman who works here and somebody. It's all very, there's like, like there's ways to keep the Christians from sneaking in. It's a little in, more secretive. Yeah. yeah. No, it but it's there secretive, just, but it's there for that purpose. Right. Yeah. And a lot of them do telemedicine. So if, you know, even if you're mm-hmm. in a rural area. So if they're in a different state you or can different do area. It. Yeah. I used it when I was trying to find a therapist for my older son because it's, you know, it's not as bad here as it is there, but there's st- most of the major therapy places are Christian run. and It's bad here. It's real bad. Yeah, Children's yeah, therapy I, is I even worse than adult therapy yeah. oh. for religious oh, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Finding a child That's why when my kids, when anywhere. we found a, new, found a therapist and he changed locations, we followed him because... Yeah. There when you find no a good one, you go need to follow that. them. It's yeah, yeah, there's it was, no way that I'm going to go through that search and find. And I actually had emailed a couple of them because it brought me up a list. And, of course, all of them lived in Minneapolis, St. Paul, too far away. And I I messaged a couple of them and just said, here's the deal. I have this son. I'm trying to find him a therapist. And they were very friendly. Most of them said, I would love to help you, but I just can't because I don't do telemedicine and and of course, nobody had any real good suggestions because I live in the middle of fucking nowhere and everybody's Christian. But 
Eventually, we uh, did find problem. one, but it was through <laughs> sheer chance. It was basically me looking in the phone book going, which one of these therapy places doesn't have anything that sounds like Jesus in it? Like, I just... And then I would mm-hmm. stalk their websites and just look at everything on the website looking for any little hint of, like, they're just trying to trick us into coming here so that, you know... Because a lot of those places... Drop the J-bomb on you? Well, yeah. And a lot of those places don't even... I don't think they're there to convert you. They don't intend to do that. But That's just what they do is comfort, though. But it's Exactly. That's their way of telling you how to cope with things. And so even if they're not trying to proselytize to you, they could be, without even knowing it, just making you super uncomfortable because their ways of dealing with stuff isn't the same. But... Yeah, basically, you got to stock a whole bunch of websites to try to find somebody who's halfway decent. But Secular Therapy Project, I'll put a link in the show notes. Um, It's super easy. I've used it. And more and more people are signing up for it all the time. Like, it started a few years ago, and there was hardly anybody on it. But the longer it goes on, the bigger it gets. It's hard to be a secular therapist. Yeah. Well, and that's why they don't... Because unlike other levels of medicine or other stages of parts of medicine, that's a field where it's not detriment it's more detrimental to not be religious yeah well and that's why they don't tell you who the people are they just give you a list of you know here's somebody who's in this well, yeah, town you could be ostracized well because if you're somebody just logging on to there to find out who they are so you can target them you're not going to find out mm-hmm. like there's a layer you have to go through before you they'll before their names will just pop up because they know that they could lose clients well if, if they're in a in a group practice they don't want to be the second right. therapist in a big practice yeah so it's more like a, they just want people to know that they're kind of a safe person to come to if if you're looking for a therapist and you want someone that is definitely not yep. religious at all so it's a great i think it's a recovering from religion project like an offshoot of that Probably. so yeah yeah check it out so do we, we're at about an hour, but is there anything, Christina, that you, I guess anything that you want to talk about that you left out or that any shit you want to talk about, Amy? I don't know. What do you think? So much shit it's about Amy, true. but yeah, <laughs> that's a whole other show. <laughs> oh my God. That's my offshoot show. She's probably show. not wrong. Oh man. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, starting a new show again. next week. It's just talk <laughs> shit about Amy. Mm-hmm. She'll just keep coming on. She'll be like, and another thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's a new segment. Let me and tell you about thing. this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Let me talk to you about pineapple on pizza. <laughs> oh my God. No, yeah, I, don't, I don't think so. Um, unless y'all have asked some pretty good questions though. I, unless y'all have any other questions here. Um, not really. Not really. I mean, it was, yeah, We I think we no, covered a lot about, about the death topic. And <laughs> well, no, no. I she was so mad. She was like, you bitch. <laughs> you had a death episode without me. I'm like, I, I didn't want, the thing is, I didn't want to have her on for that death episode. I wanted it to be like a separate episode that was just yeah, her. That's just focused <laughs> on I, your story. We already and talked about it before. Episode. I was like, okay, okay. I also told her she, you were like that's a great way to like calm me down. Yeah, yeah. She she uh she totally calmed me down with that. Yeah, the two of I, us I, just I shook her real hard and I said <laughs> calm down right okay. in her face. That always helps. If you just tell me to calm down, so I will calm down. <laughs> always. Yeah, it works always. with most Cal- women. Telling me to calm down works the best. Yeah, especially no, I almost posted this on your Facebook today the the let the rage pour through you. I saw that one. <laughs> good. Yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I almost a, did, but I'm like, mm, I don't know if her friends will appreciate all of that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> pro tip, pro tip for all the guys out there: if you're ever with a lady and mm-hmm. she's just getting out of hand, just look at her and say, "You need Hysterical, to calm down," if you will. and yeah. it, it works, works every, every single time. time. Every time, yep. every percent. Trust me, trust me on this one. I'm getting mad just having this conversation. Yeah. Oh actually. my god! Speaking of, so <laughs> to go totally off topic, but on the topic wow. of dudes being right. dudes and being just fucking ridiculous so this drag show i was at last night <laughs> she had to just talk about the drag I did, show. it was amazing but no there were these guys there who and i don't know a lot about like drag show etiquette but there were a couple of guys there who would put dollar bills like in their pants or in their mouth and want the drag queen to come and get it like like they were at a strip club Gross. and like that's not no they're not here to put on a sexual show just for you you know there was another guy that kept just trying to get up on stage with one of them and i'm just looking around going really there's like 40 people here it's a tiny tiny town we got these 
wonderful, like, professional-level drag queens to come to our shit town and do a show. And here you drunk fuckers are, pretending that you're at the strip club. It, it just, ugh, I don't... I don't know. Dudes, just stop. Stop duding. They're gross. Stop duding. And I think a lot of them were probably gay men, too, because it was... It was a fundraiser for the pride. It's a long story. But anyway, <laughs> dudes, gay or straight, quit being jerks and... Stop being dudes. Stop feeling like everybody's stop there to put on a sexual dudes. show for you. So, anywho. I also drank one shot of wild turkey and it was terrible and I almost died. She was texting me that. She's like, I drank wild turkey. I'm like, gross. It's so <laughs> nasty. I didn't have a choice. Well, thank you for Poor coming on decisions. and... Yeah, I, yeah, I'm only 42. I have room to grow, you know? I need to mature <laughs> a little bit before I can... Just to age properly. It really is, yeah. Thank you well, so... Well, the, the good thing... The, well, no, the not good thing, but... the ah, Not good thing, but the best thing about this whole... The whole situation is... The group of friends here are just amazing. Oh, yes. yeah. Like, I, I like, don't think I would have made it I'm just my like a tag along. In my secular like, community no. that I have here. They have been... They're seriously um, amazing. Amazing, like, like we, we seriously have the best friends ever. That raised like a, a meal train and a, not a go family, yeah. but like through that, like money. Like I will say, my secular friends. Um, not the saying that all my religious friends did not come through, but to, for me because there were very there were several you know religious no, friends absolutely. that did. But I will say above and beyond, my secular friends are the ones that were like showing up at my house, bringing me food, um, checking in on me. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they were the ones that were the the action friends well because yeah, middle of the night out. drop everything we'd all go over there and get drunk you know yes as you do. once you yeah. figure out that <laughs> i need some people here and my friends were like done yeah. we're coming over even though i was like all the way out in freaking nowhere because i was living on a farm at the time you know like it's fine we all carpooled we're good it was <laughs> amazing like i don't know how it would have gotten th- through with it and or through it without them, and um, but before before that, we were all planning his murder anyway. So well, obviously, yeah. Like <laughs> oh, when we started, like we started the divorce. No, all, seriously, all right. when he started the divorce process, we were like, okay, who's got a shovel? Oh my god, <laughs> you got some farmland. You were with Christina, me the whole time. Saying, like <laughs> we're just saying, because we were pissed off at him. But no, I found. I mean, okay, I've had a, FBI. A if you're community. listening, they're just kidding. It's okay. Okay. It's a joke. No, I've already been cleared for it. Oh, it was gosh. it was clear cut. Oh, okay, it's fine. <laughs> That's yeah, the other thing. Okay. Like when that good, happens, good you're know. already a suspect in the murder. In, oh, in a possible yeah. murder. Everybody's seen SVU. So I didn't even yeah. think about that. Twenty four hours. Hmm, yay. Oh, good God. You're gonna have to come back on just to talk about that now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Twenty four yeah. hours. That so, uh, intrigues me. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't. It's not that big of a thing as yeah. you think it was because it was a pretty obvious like cut and dry case. But could you make it into a really good story? Hmm? Yeah, Don't just pretend wait. like it's a great. I said, could you just make it into a really good story, though? And oh, every I every couple yeah, minutes, for go, sure, dun, dun. for sure, I'll come yeah. back dun, on dun. and make it a really great story. Um, yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, my secular community was uh, amazing, They're and they amazing. still are. They still are like. They are my rock, and I don't know how I would have gotten through it without them. Like, like we have we have like the best group of friends too. Like we we have this group text. And it'll be, like, either blowing up and I'll miss 21 messages while I'm at work, or it'll be quiet for, like, two days. It just depends. Amy is always bragging about her cool friends, so they must be a good friend. She says that all the time. So (laughs) All the time. (laughs) I can vouch for that. It's You are definitely the coolest. Shmishtina, yeah. Shmishtina. Oh, yeah. Shmishtina is somebody totally different, I thought. (laughs) Am I missing something? She's there. Okay. Double, double so we we're at an hour. My child is upstairs waiting for me to say goodnight to him, or else it's going to be a bad oh, okay. night because tomorrow Ugh, morning he has a program. Thing, whatever. It's, God, I've got three. I'm so overrated. <laughs> I'm over it. I'm successfully ignoring one, but the other one's just going to be a pain in the ass until I show up. So, thank you for coming. And yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate you letting me bring you on your show. Oh yeah, come back again sometime. Yeah, let me depress the hell out of your your listeners. Talk about again. fun stuff. Uh, uh-huh. Our our listeners are all <laughs> it's depressed. Actually, it's something really practical to think about, though. It like, is. What yeah. do you do? It in, is an interesting you're subject. An I think for for secular people, I do think it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, what do you do in trauma, mm-hmm. especially surrounded by a bunch of Christians? Like, yeah, yeah. Goodness. Fun time. Anyway, everybody, ponder that. <laughs> we'll be back next week, um, talking about some other 
random nonsense topic that we'll have we'll have a very detailed laid out meeting we'll decide planning sesh if you will it'll take a couple of hours we'll make sure we definitely (laughs) won't decide on the topic five minutes before i hit record right Um, no that's not going to happen so enjoy whatever outro this is i I think i'm gonna have (laughs) fritch put something i don't know oh that's it send us fucking outros people just not your fucking cat please please that's well now she's got to be on here i'm gonna i'm making a note (laughs) on my phone (laughs) she had her cat recorded she was like rare rare it wasn't me it was her it was all her idea okay Okay. so anyway yeah but everybody else send us outros there's a link in the show notes it's so easy you only need to use your phone it's not a big deal so we will see you next time bye bye we say Thank you to some of our listeners for coming today. We tried to put out a spiel to make you all feel satisfied. If you esteem our delightful bitchcraft, follow us on the social media and send us all of your green to Patreon's graph through the use of the Google machine. We'll be back, so you know, one day faster if you pledge our show. We'll be back, so stay strong, but if you find you can't wait that long, don't just sit on idle hands, come commiserate with other fans in our secret Facebook group. Where you can all discuss the latest episode of Secular Soup. La 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 da 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 You say you want to tell us to go fuck Podcast at gmail.com But don't expect an answer Even though we try to answer That's a lie, we never answer The emails that go unanswered Forever and ever And ever and ever and ever Please go rate and review our show in all the places like iTunes. Help us spread far and near this soup gospel we brought to your ear. Once we're done, as always, we'll have Eli Bosnick sing our praise. Text a friend to join the troop and very deeply personal shout out in the next episode of Cellular Soup. La da 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 Secular Soup Creed. Soup is the ultimate virtue. It's delicious, nutritious, patriarchy smashing, racism fighting, warm and fuzzy, human affirming, fun having, anti theist, glitter throwing, tummy satisfying, pair of new shoes fulfilling, diversity seeking, happiness. Minestrone, beef and barley, chicken broth and split pea, gazpacho, tomato, clam chowder and potato. Chicken noodle, beef noodle, egg drop, and ramen cup. Miso, gumbo, leek, and foe. Grab a bowl and taste the magic. Slurp even this.